Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now, sometimes the simplest things are usually the best. And this bit of advice that I learned oof, over 30 years ago now is just as good today as it was back then. And that is to keep an astronomical journal or a logbook or a diary, if you like. Now, the benefits of this are in itself astronomical, if you pardon the pun. But there's so many things you're going to learn through actually just jotting down each night's observation. I'll go into uh, how to actually set your diary out uh, a little later on in the video. But um, uh, over a period of time, if you do this every single time that you go out and observe the night sky, and you over a, 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 just a few years, you're going to build a nice catalog of references. Okay, now these references are, are going to be everything because like, when I say everything, what I mean by that is this going to refer to your, uh, exactly what telescope you're going to be using, what magnification you are going to be using, the weather conditions, all different bits and pieces that when you add them all together, you're quickly going to find out what's the best time to observe, let's say, the planets or, or a certain uh, Messier target or something like that. So first off, uh, let's just, let me just sh quickly show you how you would lay out a diary. First thing, the obvious, the date and the time. Always time to write down the date and the time. Uh, you want to also write down what type of telescope you was using, whether it was a refractor, a reflector, a Cassegrain, whatever. It's, uh, and you'll find it's, it's important that you do write this down, um, as you will see later on. Uh, you want to write down the magnification um, is also important that you wrote down, write down that and what target you was looking at. Okay, uh, now these are the th like main basics uh, of what you need to write down, and you can add as much as you like and and make this thing as complicated or as not as complicated as you want if you get what I mean. You tailor it to yourself. Um, but it's, it is really important to put uh, the, the type of telescope and the eyepiece. Now, I'll show you something that I found uh, quite recently, actually. Uh, now, I've been doing this diary method for years, and I still do it now. Um, and I, I found a really old diary from 1988, believe it or not. I'll show you it in a minute. Uh, but I didn't write down what telescope I was using. And I was just thinking, oh, you know, why didn't I actually write down? I wrote everything else down, but not telescope. And I've been racking my brains uh of what actually telescope i did actually use but like i say where this is going to uh, benefit uh, especially when you learn in astronomy is writing things down and this is a fact this isn't a matter of opinion this is a fact the human brain absorbs information much better when you actually write the thing down and this, like I say, this involves the, the sky conditions, the weather, the temperature, you know, find all these little details out and just make a note of them. And like I say, once you've actually found, got a catalog, you can, you'll, you'll start knowing and getting a reference saying, well, on this particular night, Jupiter was, you know, really good for this particular uh, spell of uh, what, whatever time. And like, you may find there's a match in temperature um, or, or just uh, in the air pressure is very important as well for conditions. Always find out wh what the air pressure is. Low pressure usually means kind of dodgy um, or not the best conditions where high pressure is usually a good sign that the seeing conditions are going to be good. Um, Another thing to also write down in this his diary is take notes of any targets that you say, well, tonight, let's say tonight you're going to find uh, M57, okay? And you, you, I mean, this is just an example. And you use a method of star hopping to you. That means, oh, you know, you identify a star and you think, well, it's that shape. Just make a quick sketch of that little constellation down in the notes section of your journal, okay? And so you skipped over to this star and then found it, you know, via uh, that distance of those two stars. Just jot all this information down. It's going to be valuable 
later on because there's times in astronomy where you'll have already found out where you especially if you've just started you'll quickly realize just how many cloudy nights they are and it's very few precious few uh, clear nights we get and by the time you've actually got set up and got back out to say you didn't find a particular target you forgot you, you will have forgot you know what you did now you've got a reference and trust me as soon as you start doing and, and just jotting down your nights of observation within a few weeks you'll realize how beneficial it is now this isn't no idea of mine astronomers have been doing this for years and you, you, at the start of the video, I said, uh, you know, it was a bit of uh, advice I heard many years ago, and, a, and it was from the sky at night, um, and it was by the late, great Sir Patrick Moore. You'll hear me mention his name quite a few times on this channel, all-time hero of mine. And uh, he um, introduced this to the British public many, many years ago, and uh, I mean, Patrick Moore literally had an entire library worth of every single observation he did from whatever year up to his death, basically. And, uh, and another good idea, which is also one of Patrick's idea, Patrick Moore's ideas, is you can have diaries for all different targets. So you could have one for the planets. Yeah, you could have one for Mars. A, a separate one for Saturn, a separate one for Jupiter, a separate one for the moon. You see where I'm going with this? And so you're not cluttering one, you know, diary up with so many loads of information, if you get me. And you can have a general, you know, uh, stargazing diary, but you can also have these specific individual diaries, which again are going to help just massively um, getting to grips with the learning curve of astronomy because astronomy is a slow process the learning curve is a slow process I've always said this uh, said this <laughs> said this uh, but it's an enjoyable one and it's a it's an uh, a rewarding a rewarding one uh, it really really is so if you keep this journal or this diary it's really going to speed that learning curve uh, process up a lot uh, just like I say, just by purely uh, writing uh, all your observations down, you're going to absorb that information so much better. Now, when it comes to the size of the diary, um, something like this, I would say a book this size is about your minimum. OK, you don't want one of these little pocket sized diaries with very little to write on, you know, uh, something with, with uh, a reasonable amount of space to uh, um, draw uh, to write down all your notes and don't be stingy with the pages you know um it may take two or three pages to do one night all right and don't don't be worried about that put as much information as you need to just write it down like i say one of the most valuable things is when you're searching for targets and you do actually find that target write it down sell yourself you know remind yourself exactly how you found that target and uh, the rewards are massive i'll tell you i'm just doing it it's one of the best things uh, i ever started doing it and also it's fun that's that's the main part um one of the main things about doing this and keeping a diary there's so much fun to look back on your observations and a, cl and a class example is this uh now, like I say, this is one I found. I was doing some work at my parents quite recently. And uh, like doing so, there's one of the, uh, your old books in there, uh, some of your old books. And amongst it was this. I couldn't believe it. And, and as you can see, this is a big A4. And this is my journal from 1988. And uh, <laughs> I, was, I smiled as soon as I opened it because I actually remember drawing that i think i copied it out a library book i were, uh, used to always draw telescopes you know and things like that but uh, as you can see here i've actually started this diary and I, i'm sure this must have been one of my first or maybe i've had some earlier and it's a shame this has not really survived the years um i think i've got two or three observations in there uh, but like I say, what is really uh, uh, interesting, especially now 
in the 21st century. And with things like um, Stellarium uh, at hand these days so easily, you can actually, without actually going 88 miles per hour, go back in time and, uh, and I can check these observ observations I did here, or I did check, to see how accurate they were. And they weren't bad at all. And it was uh, just interesting to, uh, I looked at this one, I'll show you a close-up of this. I actually did some sketches here. Um, and I just noticed the, uh, the, the, the Galilean moons, uh, what an interesting arrangement there was in. And sure enough, I, I went on Stellarium, went back to 1988. It does sound like something out of Back to Future, this, doesn't it? And uh, sure enough, there was position like that. But that was fantastic, that. Um, it was so nostalgic that I could go back uh, with Stellarium to this very night. Because I got it right down here. I haven't got my glasses on. Let me put, put these on. Uh, might be able to see things a little bit better. Yeah, this was on uh, 1810. Um, not the year. I'm not that old. Uh, Monday, February the 22nd, 1988. And I put very little information. Too much cloud for observation. Ended for time being. <laughs> Good at first, then changing patchy. And then I got very vague towards the end. I even did a little sketch of Venus here, look. And I have checked that, and it was in that phase on that particular night. Uh, in the West, not bad. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it was just really interesting to, to, to go through this. And uh, I'm very nostalgic. But, yes, like I say, I mean, there's I I something else as well. I'll not show you, but there's going to be embarrassing spelling mistakes in there. And it's not as though I were a little kid. <laughs> I was like a young teenager. So, uh, yeah, quite embarrassing. Some uh, really bad spelling mistakes in there. But, yeah, as you can see, you know, I mean, this is from uh, over 30 years ago. But you can imagine how many catalogues you can build up. Uh, but, like I say, when they get this old, it's just a bit of fun. Well, not just a bit of fun. I mean, you can use it as reference as well. I mean, well, you could if it were a little bit more detailed than this. You know, uh, Turning patchy, not bad, and uh, about that. But what I do regret um, is, like I say, not putting uh, what telescope I was using. And like I say, I really can't uh, think what telescope I was using in 88. I'm sure it would have been a refractor. But anyway, there you go. There, there's an idea of, uh, and the size, again, you can see I'd have been better off actually doing it this way instead of doing it in columns. But I'll leave that up to you. But don't be stingy with the size of the journal that you buy or the book or the log that you, or you, you're going to buy to use uh, as your astronomical journal. So the next time you're out and about, go and grab yourself a book of some kind and uh, start uh, doing a journal or a log or a diary, however you want to call it. You're not going to regret doing it. Promise, I promise you. It's, uh, it's as, as you can see, it's something I've, I've, I've done, been doing it for years, still doing it, probably not as often as I should do these days. Uh, but yeah, uh, start doing it today. Well, that's about it for another video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like the video, maybe hit that like button because it really does help the channel. In the meantime, don't forget to write everything down and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.